Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to Kaiserreich. I'm your host, Mr. Republic of China Lover. But we gotta talk about revolutionary successes in Korea. During the wars of unification and the war of resistance, Korean revolutionaries fought alongside the National Revolutionary Army. Many of them belonged to the Korean National Revolutionary Party, an organization created by the Korean officer Tim Won Bong, himself a graduate of the revolutionary Wonpo Academy. As such, after the war, Kim Wong Bong returned home with the KNRP to administer Korea's recently liberated nation. As part of his reforms to modernize Korea, Kim has implemented the ideals of the three principles of the people, taking a strong influence from the Chinese Kuomintang today. Korean representatives met with Ho Zong Nang to discuss the future relationship between the Republic of China and the Republic of Korea. While Korea is to remain under China's sphere and protection, it will nonetheless enjoy a sense of nominal autonomy. As the two have pledged to work together as twin revolutionary sisters to liberate East Asia from imperialism, we stand together. Oh, and also we got rid of a lot of our uh, generals last time, so we should probably throw these guys back on, huh? Mm. Harsh leader, harsh leader, judgment speed, uh, promotion costs, okay. Zeely click officer, huh? Um, I don't like that guy. Yeah, this guy looks pretty good over here. Um, who else do we have? Ooh, what is this? Guo Min Jun general. Yeah. Wow, level 7 attack, Jesus Christ, aggressive. I could promote you too, why not? Another general, organization first, offensive doctrine. Oh, there you go. Liu Binghui. Yeah. And we'll throw one. Which one? Oh, well, we got quite a few of these guys. You have level 6 attack. Holy crap. Uh, you're pretty bad on defense, though. You are more diverse. Li, Li Ji Shen. Did we get rid of him or something? Hmm. Because right now, we got to talk about after midnight. Dusk falls over the old KMT, and as an era comes to an end, the old order with its warlords and emperors is long gone. Thrown down by a second wave of triumphant revolutionaries, but many are the same revolutionary dreamers whose voices were once so powerful are not so anymore. The leaders who are poised to rule the nation now find themselves languishing on the sideline or worse as a new generation of revolutionary leadership takes the blame. Wang Jingwei's clique is mostly gone. Uh, with the reorganized comrades, uh, association ban is up subversive. His followers are scattered to the winds when Chen Gongbo fleeing into exile. His once mighty opposition is similarly dissolved under the weight of persecution. Song Jingling has not been seen in public for many weeks, placed under the house arrest weeks ago. She officially is a board member for multiple charities, often in her husband's name, though in practice lives a quiet life of solitude. Deng has never been found, it's unclear if he's left still alive, but his hope underground existence would come to anything has dimmed. Any hope for a successful united front is dead with them, and the feuding cliques of the League of Chinese Syndicalists has similarly fled, leaving one another on the way out. Sun Fo seems to be the only one left standing, even as most of his wealthy followers have been cutting their losses, and he has shifted loyalty to the generalissimo or gone abroad into hiding. The premier of the executive one. His power has become increasingly titular, shrinking in the face of the advancing revolutionary army comrades association, the Raka. He, Zong Han, the leader of this, even more radical wing of the CRS, has sought to gut the bureaucracy inspired by the Surrealian's revolutionary teachings of an accidental vanguard in a seat of meetings with General Hu. Sun fights tooth and nail, insisting his father's words remain paramount even in this new era. Dr. Sun's words continue to hold merit. Perhaps it's time we begin to look to the future. As we've done, the Republic's only salvation. If you're in this one, please go ahead. But we're going to currently do abolish the legislative Xi'an. Oh no, totalism. Oh well. Democracy is a degenerative disease within the party, and the perversion of liberalism within the party's ranks have diluted the party's beliefs and ideals. Even with the party's community system, derived from cynicalist models, the KMT's organization must be reorganized if we are to save our country. We must strive for total obedience to, so there will be no in inefficiencies and no hesitation to achieve national salvation for China today. So we get more totalism, national populism, war sport. Modify the rump state, more weekly stability, which is what we really want, better political advisor costs, and more compliance with growth speed, which is very good too. And I would like to also uh, eliminate unnecessary uh, bureaucracy, but that can actually kind of wait overall. Get some better artillery. It is 1943, everybody. Have a great new year, even though it's already April. Um, oh, what is the correct combo with nowadays? I don't remember. There you go. We're using more armored cars and whatnot. And the next one after this one, exalt the NRA, more weekly stability. I like that too. The National Revolutionary Army is the lifeline of a national revolution. In it, we entrust our lives and perform our duty for the salvation of the Chinese nation. Let's emulate the methods of Japanese imperialists, whom, while are despicable to pursue their uh, imperialist agenda on our land, uh, have long cultivated a tradition of sacrifice, duty, and discipline that the NRA should strive for. As such, the NRA must be above all civilian and party matters. So, more army XP, war sport, the Japanese return concessions in China. Wow! In the peace negotiations following your victory against the Japanese, they agree to return any Chinese concessions seized after the peace treaty. As such, we return what is rightfully ours. Another victory for China, another humiliation for the rivals in the East, the century of humiliation is one step closer to ending. Japan's influence in the mainland China should be all but over now. Wow, Qingdao and Wei Highway? Not bad. I still have a crap ton of events to do here, or little decisions to do here, and claiming our place in the world. Um, 
the Chinese were not the only victims of imperialism. Across the continent, the rapacious expansion of European empire swallowed up free nations, subjecting millions of brutal colonial rule to the east. The Japanese have joined in with oppressors, risking to plant their own flag in soil. Uh, it's their duty as a natural protective agent to free all peoples across the land. Through our spirit, blood, and necessary guile, we'll shatter the grip of imperialist powers both at home and abroad. In the meantime, we shall help elevate the national consciousness of Asian peoples, helping them share in the glory of Pan-Asian socialism. Alright, let's integrate. Great, if you want to do this, please go ahead. Yay! Abolish it. Good. And exalt. And remove the rump state because we need that weekly stability. We need better compliance growth. We need better political advisor costs. And look at Lin Biao, which is not bad. Coming place in the world. Dr. Sun Yat-sen's vision of China saw China take a rival place in East Asia and the world at large um, and to utilize their mighty resources and peoples to foster international goodwill and cooperation. With the success of the National Revolution, it's only logical that the next step should be to reassert our influence and spread the ideals of the National Revolution so that China will never again fall victim to imperialism. Which would be great. We could create our own faction, but I want to increase integration in Xinjiang because that in integrating them would be great. Complete the Tongpu Railway. Construction of the Tongpu Railway began during the period of reforms initiated by the Gang Guangxu Emperor. The railway runs from the central part of Shangxi going through Taiyuan to connect with Huashuan, Huashan Station in Shangxi. The warlord uh, Yan Jishan began construction of the railways, but progress stalled due to the instability of the central plains. As a result, the Ministry of Railways has commissioned a building project in cooperation with British railway advisors to complete the Tongpu Railways and facilitate easier transportation through both mountainous provinces. Ooh. It's not bad for more steel, it's not bad railways, infrastructure. We'll take that, since we can right now. Deck conversions, not bad. Uh, we're gonna keep working on a lot of naval stuff. Uh, where are we at with this? Temperate battleships, we're not even using them though. I want sub fours. It's gonna take a while, but once we get the subs, it'll be pretty easy to make them. As we're building up a lot of civvies, which is not bad, but we'll need a lot of uh, dockyards too. Eventually, we need a lot of roads. We're just really here to build up the industrial base as much as we possibly can. We can put them up across uh, the coast as well. Agent captured. No, we're not you two. God dang it. Sappers are done. Why is everyone getting captured? Like, row. Are you gonna. Hello? Operations? Operations? Is it medium? Upgrade it to hello, hello, yes, please, my god. Oh, Vietnam's here, huh? Are you gonna, like, copy these people? Or what? We're not even making support of them, that's not good. Okay, then. You're at the very top of the list. New three principles a lot more political power, military cynicalism, maintain extraordinary powers, daily political power. That's pretty nice. Um, but I do want to get over here to get a research slot. So we read this last time. If you remember about this, please go ahead. Nice. Oh, uh, it's the Chinese automobile industry, huh? Reliability for armored cars. Uh, attack and defense, why not? Not bad. And in the meantime... And we also have a, some water and some uh, monster energy drink. Ultra strawberry dreams. Pretty nice. There you go. Thank God, Jesus Christ. You're taking too long to rescue these people. Rituals and Secrets in Laraka. While the Republic Front is a China Revival Society, members of the much more closely uh, movement of He Zong Han's Revolutionary Army Comrades Association, a military clique popular amongst radical Wampo students, are responsible for the training and indoctrination of the CRS. Um, with the comparisons given to the, them as a fraternal organization akin to the reorganized military association, commence, um, in the Wampo Military Revolutionary Classmates Association, the Araka indeed follows a much more esoteric method of organization and secrecy. In fact, most spectacular of the rituals is an initiation ceremony into the Raka itself. Prospective Raka members can only achieve membership through recommendation of the older members and are instructed to learn the society's or society's uh, secret science and esoteric language. Excuse me. At the ceremony. Candidates vow to keep the secrets of the fraternity and then read oaths from a paper which is then burned and mixed into a bowl of chicken blood tinted with wine and sugar. Next, new pledges. They become blood brothers by squeezing some of their blood in the bowl and drinking from it. These ceremonies are accompanied by secret body and hand signals as well as secret dance, which is a means by which the rank and file and officers identify each other. Similarly, there are reservations about these superstitious and triad-esque rituals performed by the Raka. After all, such measures seem childish, and with the CRS having achieved leadership of their power, is there really a need for such secrecy in the movement? But there's no doubt that the fraternal organization of the Raka is indeed quite popular amongst the new and established officers of the Wampoa, and the generalissimos who crack down on them may lead to unrest among the fellow, uh, followers of He Zong Han. Oh, they are so young and have needed guidance. Youthful vigor is just what the country needs. Can you actually go national populist here? 
Uh, I think we're going to stick with to uh, totalism since we are going that way and we need that political power anyway. So that'd be cool if we could go national populist though. The nationalization of education. China's greatest problem is ed education. The failure of education has caused problems within the party and the nation. We should eliminate all local autonomy of public schools. I think we read this, read this last time. And close down private and religious states. The curricula of schools should only feature a national education focused on Chinese culture and Chinese problems. Our goal is to foster for students uh, a single-minded love for the dear motherland, of course. We're going to need this for ships, too. What else we got? Complete the Longhai Railway. Uh, the mountainous pass of Shangxi makes transportation often difficult and long for those who need to venture across the province. During the Qing Dynasty, construction began on a railway to stretch from Luoyang to the western province of Gongsu due to the instability of the warlords. Uh, progress on the railway has often been stalled, as such, the National Government's Ministry of Railways commissioned a new project to finally complete the railway. The railway's end goal is to stretch more than 1,700 kilometers and be led by the railway engineer Ling Hongjun, which we'll do after we integrate uh, Zhejiang. Zhejiang. Nice. Very nice. Uh, expand the military pension system. It's not bad. Industrialization of agriculture. Oh God. Get more political power, which I do like. Remove devastated nation. Get Chinese autarky. Consumer goods factors factor. Factories factor. Oh, it doesn't look good for us. Belt faster. The Prince and the Pauper. In many ways, a new state resembles an uh, army built around a strict dogmatic hierarchy of Ampola. At the very top of the chain command sits uh, Wu Zongnam, and beneath them are a mere personal circle. More personal circle with a Li Xiangxi, dubbed the 13th Tai Bao, a nickname derived from the Chinese folklore. These men are some of the Hu's most loyal supporters and protégés, and far exceeding Sun Fo, the official premier and influence. The generally most left and right hands are He Zongham and Dai Chongfeng, each embodying vastly different wings of Hu supporters. He Zong Nan is an ideologue at heart, born to a gentry family. A former Marxist, cynicalist, and propagandist, he was an associate with Dong Bi Wu before studying abroad in France. A more worldly officer with roots as a middle school teacher, he holds vast ideological ambitions, hoping to refine his beliefs into a comprehensive totalitarian socialist program for his nation to follow. Dai Chung Feng was born to a poor but determined single mother. He spent his youth getting into fights, gambling, and also briefly studying to be a teacher. A brilliant student, despite a limited conventional education, his nationalism often takes inspiration from Chinese classics and the various heroes and myths that populated them. He spent his life living off the land before joining the party, and he is far less ideological than those who would, he, who would flee abroad to Europe in 1927, that said. With a lax ideological refinement, he well makes a foreign dogged loyalty. He prefers his name Dai Li, uh, a figure that indicates a sad, servant status for his master. The two men were almost born world apart in the old order, but were united by the revolution, the Wampo spirit, and the service of Hu Zongnan. Another teacher by education, but more of a humble stock, he nonetheless has his, has his start in politics as a minor newspaper editor. He adds immediate to increasing clashes between the two major wings of the party, particularly over questions of idealistic revolution, cynical patronage, personal brotherhood, and national interests. Who has leveraged his older and closer connection to Chiang Kai-shek to become the undisputed leader of the China Revival Society? And even now as his Tai Bo fight, there's little question who is ultimately they serve. More totalism. It's not bad. We place unfailing trust in Ling Hu. Strike a revolutionary line. Italy united. Good job, Italy, even though you're united by national populace, which is actually not terrible for us. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Europe. Unfortunately or unfortunately. The Rock Spectre mostly won. The Anton is actually back in Italy, which is weird. Uh, France, and not in North America, though. The international exists in Mexico and Great Britain. That's pretty much it. And Russia is slowly... They're slowly getting pushed back, which, honestly, was not bad for us, but I still want to... I wouldn't mind beating them up, but I don't mind helping them out for now, actually. Because... Uh, we... Don't want the Reichs back to win, because they're imperialists. Disgusting, disgusting imperialists. There we go. So this army's done. I wouldn't mind mobilizing these cores to become uh, actual, like, motorized, but we don't have enough uh, stuff for that. We're building up our industry more, and building up our navy, too. Gary horses? Well, they're not quite horses anymore, but still, whatever. Cavalry templates, we're done with that. Yeah, we're done with that. Uh, you guys are 10 combo width with 2. Yeah, that's better. We don't need militia anymore. Type A division. It's not bad, but we don't need that one. Motorized? I'd like to keep the motorized for now. Yeah. Hello. Oh. What do you got here? Hey, we're done with the land doctor finally. Look at that. All Russian volunteers. You're going to help hold it as best you possibly can. Uh, Supply looks really god-awful all over the place here. 
Can you do something like this, maybe? Just like hold a frickin' line? You're gonna get the crap beat out of you, so we're gonna give you who's the best defensive general that we've got. Yeah, I'm still gonna get more attack on organization loss and whatnot, so. Not bad, overall. Could we? We really wanted to be radical here. Oh, can't send attach We need more political power. We always need more political power, god dang it. Why does one straight up annex Jin Jiang? That'd be nice. Good, 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 good. Um, land reform. Rally the blue shirts. New order in Ganan. Well, that's not bad. Weekly war sport will go up. Or losing weekly war sport, we are. That's not good. Reinforces. Reinforce the Tilu. Totalism. Rally the blue shirts. The members of the China Baba Society and Revolutionary Army Comrades Association are described as blue shirts due to their uniforms as well as the patches they wear des designating their affiliations within the KMT. Organized in a similar manner to Oswald Mosley's black shirts, the blue shirts will serve as a paramilitary muscle and in this time of national crisis. Um, it's important that we rally them to help save our nation from destruction. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, a fifth research slot, thank god. Um, we're gonna need uh, some of these ships too. What do we got here? Better uh, fighter production? Sure, why not? Hey, you're actually in the battle now. Probably doing something here. Just for the most part, mostly help defend, because it looks like things are being treated around a whole bunch. Um, there you go. The group carrier holes are nice. And that's level two. China will modernize. Not sure how fast, but it will modernize eventually. Working on it, you know. For one's not great. Take a state nation, rally the blue shirts. Proclaim the permanent purge. Ooh. Better consumer goods. Cultivate patronage networks. Authoritarian Democrats will join the group here. Huh? Maintain extraordinary powers. I like that because it helps production uh, or production of uh, lack of resources penalty. Daily command power gain. Gain more political power. More wars for totalism and national populism is not too bad either. Hmm. Ministry syndicalism. I like the political power. In the desperate and chaotic times, the government countries are as, as restless as a result of the intra-party factional struggles, as well as the role of foreign imperialists in the subverting our stability. It is necessary uh, that the generally most emergency powers be maintained indefinitely during the stage of tutelage, so they will have no barriers or bureaucratic means to block our Ling Yu from exercising his duty. Oh, you're actually just kind of hanging out, huh? Can you actually win here? Oh, and then you get attacked. Whatever. A new order in Ganon. In an effort at rural pacification, instead of pursuing a harsh stance towards the people of the country, let us instead try to reach out and endear them to via populist moral programs to fight corruption, opium consumption, prostitution, yay, illiteracy, and unemployment. Not only will this strengthen the moral vigor of our country, but it will also receive greater support towards their leadership. Absolutely. Hey, two more days. Commissions in a changing army. The National Revolutionary Army has always been a fraternal in mindset with deeply entrenched bonds of personal loyalty, board, uh, fortified. By a shared ideological zeal, these powerful networks of social ties often transcending part of factionalization was torn apart when the fallout of the Third Repatriated Congress put units and officers harsh against one another. This has threatened to tear out the heart of what was once a mighty victorious army, which repelled larger foes, better equipped and even better led by the might of its shared stubborn revolutionary willpower. Look at that. Now the non loyalist National Revolutionary Army units and blue shirt paramilitaries barely able to keep order, there have been a heightened interest within the new government for limited man mass amnesty programs for select units, less the army at advantage and taking on important opponents. Within the military doctrinal divide, the CRS was always identified as a part of the broader Young Guard umbrella, trained extensively in foreign technologies in Europe. This made General He, Zhang Han, and Deng Wenyi more willing to forgive members of the political department clique, now led by Zhang Zixiong. Although Zhu and lies at large, some members of the Dai Chun Fang's arrivals in the Red Square acquiesced to returning to the fold. We have all our guys back, look at that. Um, the All Guard of the military hour is far more relevant and continues to carry on much of the prestige of now mythologized uh, Mingan insurgency. Um, and it shares a heavy connection with the Wampua alumni fraternities, thanks to the lobbying members of the India clique and also Lin Biao. A Mingan commander's turned influential CRS leader is believed that the right words that can sway many of Lin's old Mingan colleagues into siding with the new government. In both cases, however, there remains a question of how much old mindsets can change, and whether or not they can truly be forgiven for their lack of vision. Perhaps the truly revolutionary thing to do would be to promote a new generation of military officers, more aligned with the Generalissimus goals. A young guard paves the way forward. Reconciling the NRA will heal the nation. Only truly loyal can be trusted. Oh, we can use that political power. I like the national populism, though. We get 100 command power, which we don't need. I like that political power, because we barely get any right now. You get more national populism, though. 
we get more political power, we get 3% more here, though, too. I'll do that one by now. We're just extremely national uh, totalists here. Um, we don't have enough fuel for what we really want, so get another thing of this. That's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Train. China's looking nice and whole, though. We love it. I venerate the cult of violence. National training. Nationalist youth organizations. Not bad. The soul of national restoration. Well, that'd be good to go get better weekly award support. Uh, venerate the cult of violence. The current dissension towards the leadership of the party. Our examples of the party must be cleansed with the beauty of violence. We must, by any means necessary, save the revolution that our late leader fought and died for. All comrades must unite together and handle all matters in accordance with this glorious principle of fighting violence with violence in this contemporary world. Morality has been destroyed and power alone is the sole measure of success. Nice. Uh, that's basic anti-air. Um, more military police, maybe? Just in case. What do we have here? Anti-air. Not sure how much we're actually going to need of that, so... Mechanized, not sure how much we're actually going to need of that, either. Uh, lower by five. God dang it. We're going to need more planes. Way more planes, actually. Boop, boop. Still training, that's fine. Um, uh, come over here. As soon as he's gone, hopefully I'll come back and... Who's, who's, in, who's faction? So, we have our own group here. We have the Entente here. I guess we can go to Bhutan next. That'd be nice. Probably get them under control. Maintaining extraordinary powers, a new order in Ganon, yes. Proof carrier holes are nice, but not good enough yet. Nope, that's not good enough yet. Do we get better subs yet? No, we got a month, and then we can make even better subs. Because Go Prosperity Sphere is going to be pretty big. Transmere is looking alright. Really, we'll take these guys out. I don't want to go to war with the Entente yet. I honestly want to join the Entente, and we'll beat up the Entente that way too. How are we doing over here? Can you win here? Probably not. For whom the bell is told, the Chinese nation is known much grief over the years as a once mighty nation fell in disrepair, and the state was no longer able to protect its people. As war and revolution rag, rage, tragedy and death multiplied, virtually every household has suffered loss, poverty, displacement, or a conscription of a relative. But life continues to go on even in the darkest times and places, and now that the worst of the fighting has ceased, there's been room for happier moments as the people can finally see a future free of violence over the horizon. Hu Zongnan, it seems, is one of those people. After the collapse of the northern expedition, Hu Zongnan vowed he would not get married until after national liberation. A promise he finally kept today in a grand wedding celebration with his beautiful young fiancée. His bride, Yi Jiadi, as a fellow former teacher turned revolutionary from Zhejiang, who became an officer in the Juntong, serving as one of the Dai secretaries. The pair were introduced to each other by Dai Chunfeng and became secretly engaged and factor until very recently. Plenty of other families have celebrated the unification with weddings and children of their own, even as the dead continue to be buried. For all the trauma the Chinese people have experienced, the cycle of birth, life, and death continues on. Many were disappointed in the outcome of the once beaming revolution, but a certain sense of hope persists. Zhao Sheng Guizi. Nice. Build, 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 build. We'll turn China into a complete sweatshop if we have to. Oh, does it, is this a matter? Strength of RF, RF? Well, I guess it doesn't matter at this point anymore, does it? Um, artillery attack. Long Yun. That'd be good. More uh, artillery. Amateur expert. Yeah. No, it's not bad overall. Oh, can we get rid of this? That'd be great. Oh, we can, yeah. Unequal treaties? Yeah, we're going to get rid of that. That's the next one we got to get rid of. So we got to save our political power. New order in Ganon. Venerate the cult of violence. And then we got to do uh, the soul of national restoration. The rise and fall of the nation is a direct ratio to the flourishing, declining, or decline of national culture. If we do not first establish a new national culture, then the restoration of the nation can hardly succeed. All through the country must be made to follow our culture. Cultural control is the crux of social, political, and education activity. It is the very soul of the nation, national restoration, and one that all must follow. Yeah, absolutely. Get them cruisers done. Planes are looking all right. We're going to start working on some of this stuff, too. Our new order in Ganon. Call to violence. This is going down barely, but we'll get there eventually. Modern subs. Thank God. There you go. And what do we got here? Oh, another division. That's fine. Shove them on. Good. Finally. Valkyrie. Goodbye. Speed of four. Sub four is not... No, we need this one. Snorkel 2, so they can never find us, hopefully. And there you go. Yes, please. 
Run it at a production line of two of them at a time. Gear at the bottom. There you go. We need way more steel. Darn it. Uh, oh, we could use the three new three principles of the people. What we seek is a pure pursuit of the new three principles of the people. Uh, uh, Sun Min Sui, Doctrine for China's Present Problems. These principles shall be to strengthen the national defense, to foster ultranationalism, and to strive towards a social state. It is neither capitalism nor syndicalism, syndicalism that can save China, but rather the ideals and doctrine of totalism that will help us carry out the three principles of the people. Yeah. What is it? Here we... Wanted national socialism. Yeah, we're a national socialist here. The great, the, the Ganan New Deal. Ganan. In the south of Jiangxi province was one of the major regions of unrest during the Kuomintang Civil War, due to its location being one of the core areas of the Mingan populist government. The province has long been rather rural and poor, with popular vices such as opium and smoking and prostitution still being popular among the locals. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, one particular commissar sent south to pass by the region has received a name for himself, Cheng Ching Kuo, the son of the former headmaster of the Wampoa Military Academy, has received great acclaim in the newspapers and journals of the CRS for his work in pacifying the local population. The headmaster's son had fled, alongside many of the KMT exiles during the collapse of the Northern Expedition, and found himself in the circles of Hu Zongnan and He Zong Han in Europe. Upon his return to China, he has also found himself further entrenched in the China Revival Society, in which he has received his latest post. In Gannam, Zhang has studied government management and created a local public information desk where locals can visit him after, with their problems. He has administered health penalties for opium smoking, gambling, and prostitution per the doctrine of morality that the CRS espouses too. Regarding the ban of prostitutes and brothels, Zhang has created a program where former prostitutes can find employment in factories. Well, either way, you're selling your body out in the end. In addition, Chiang has also created a Chinese children village for orphans created by both civil war and the war resistance. The village created on the outskirts of Guangzhou features facilities such as a nursery, kindergarten, primary school, hospitals, and gymnasiums. Although the training of the schools and gymnasiums emphasize the martial spirit of the CRS ideology, a promising mile of the promising future. He does, does his father proud. He does everyone proud. That's what he does. How thick are their divisions? Good question I always ask. So, the community zone's decent, but it's not terribly fantastic. A little bit of recon wouldn't hurt, especially in defense went out, but you know what? We'll go with it. Motorize. I would like to edit that. I guess we are done with our land option, but we still have this to do over here, don't we? Smoke and fire, a little more breakthrough. Um, aggressive reconnaissance. Well, we do have reconnaissance on our reconnaissance, guys. Smoke and fire. I never choose this one. Suppressive Barrage. Well, let's see. What do we unlock here? Breakthrough. Tactical Withdrawal. Breakthrough. Overwhelming Fire. Breakthrough. Overwhelming Fire. Sounds like fun. I kind of want to do a Breakthrough, though. Counter is Ambush. Counter by black Backhand Blow. Overwhelming Fire is not counted by anything. I kind of want to be offensive here. Yeah, because this one down here, breakthrough, it's kind of by backhand blow, though. Oh, well, it's fine, whatever. Breakthrough, suppressive so barrage, mass charge, infiltration assault would be nice. Uh, elastic defense, so none of these work for us. Recon. Eh, go and do it anyways, why not? Oh, the spirit of one pole, look at this. Military leader cost goes up, but party popularity stability modifier goes up. Better infantry leader XP gain, trickster commando. Huh. That's pretty, these are all pretty, pretty cheap. The spirit is available due to our doctrines. Engineers, I like the engineering one. More initiative for everybody is really good. Inventive leadership, meticulous preparation. The spirit of Wampola seems like the one we need to choose, though. Just because we can. Can you two actually help out here, maybe? Yes, maybe no. Oh, they should have a uh, intel advantage, huh? Military place is not bad. Field hospitals, we definitely don't need that as China, do we? Oh. Speed? Sure. Production cost? I don't care. Oh, they lost up there, huh? Nice! Very nice. In progress? Better be in progress. Can you actually win here, too? Maybe? Yes? So remove ongoing resistance. That'd be nice. Let's make... Oh, we're losing... Get .55. Uh, ongoing resistance sucks. Deploy the blue shirts is okay. Devastated nation, we gotta keep working on. The battle's a national economy. Um, if I can get... I hate this guy. He's really not good. Shadowy Junta, which makes sense for us, but still. Come on. 
Maybe we can get rid of him in the next election. Huh. Nice. Alright, so you're you're getting out of there. If there's anyone we're gonna take out, um is gonna die. It'll be Bhutan and Nepal. There you go. The traitors in the ranks. As the revolution continued on through the Second Northern Expedition and the War of Resistance, many generals and officers of former reactionary warlords chose to side with the National Revolutionary Army. Seeing the writing on the wall, they, cho they should do well to join rather our cause rather than oppose it. Now the pacification campaign is underway against former CSP cells and terrorists belonging to the Reorganized Action Committee or Provisional Action Committee. The NRA's role in party politics is greater than ever. The NRA needs to, however, to more thoroughly examine its ranks to gauge which officers could potentially be willing to follow orders of the new regime, or which officers seek to bring its downfall. If anything comes to these officers, or even uh, a liability, as not all of the officers are in our employment may necessarily be former Wampoa alumni. Oh boy. Um, there's also no question of the India clique. While they participated in the Northern Expedition, they've also been known to take sides with Sun Fo and his Reconstruction faction. Given our own opposition to their foolish talks of liberalism and democracy, we might do well to get rid of the party of the India clique once and for all. It must be purified, huh? We can only trust the Wampoa brothers. Loyalty is proven on the battlefield, not on a party office. What type of reactionary nonsense is that? There you go. We always have another person to help us out. Um, what if you shorten the line up here? Because I'd like to take this towel out if we possibly can. That'd be very nice. Now we'll do this one next. Towards the true ideals of freedom. Military cynicalism. That seems pretty smart to do. Tanks would be nice, but we don't really have to do that. We're in the field already, so you might as well. What do we got here? Anything else? Anti air defense, sure. Bands carrier holes? That's no, 1944 already, so we'll get there eventually. So we need more steel. We gotta get rid of that terrible modifier. We need 150? Yeah, we really do need 150. Fuel storage is not bad. We'll continue on with that. Men, military cynicalism. The soul of China is nurtured by the blood of the martyrs of the NRA who have fought in blood for the country in the Second Northern Expedition and the War of Resistance. It is by this logic that only the military is fit to carry on the revolution. It is the eventual goal, total goal, of socialism. Let us look to the organizational methods of the syndicalists that are organized as soldiers while also strengthening military unions and alumni associations. More stability? Yes? What is this? The New Life Movement. To pull the blue shirts. This hurting us. The China Revival Society seeks to revive culture that is true Chinese culture. The events of the Third National Congress and the Kuomintang Civil War show the disintegration of national culture. Thus, it is imperative that a cultural revolution be implemented to revive the national culture and revitalize the nation of the uh, soul of the nation. They do not wish to reject Western modernization, but rather regard the village traditions of self-satisfaction, individualism, passivity, and superstition are unsuitable for the scientific age. While the four traditions of Li, Yi, Yan, and Qi were eternally valid, uh, the CRS seeks to rectify everything wrong with the old culture. It's not a spontaneous movement, but perhaps something that resonates deeply with the generalissimo Hu Zongnam. Hu, who spent many years in the exile on the Union of Britain, Bas frequently linked the Wampoa Akedas to that of the Roundheads, and compares himself with Oliver Cromwell, a strong Republican military leader, to rally the masses. He says his personal lifestyle of abstaining from one of the vices, as one of the masses should emulate, and the CRS itself has divided on whether or not to draw inspiration from the character of the Ling Yu, or to tap more into the revolutionary nature of a cultural revolution. The New Life Movement. Um, it was the launch of the behest of the Generalissimo as a revolution against reactionary liberalism and reactionary culture. Western liberal books are banned as they are seen as encouraging decadence and lust, as the encouragement of the Araka Commissars. CRS members host large rallies in which foreign books are burned and denounced as foreign and Western immorality. Uh, public smoking and spitting on the streets have been banned as they are seen as culturally and morally backwards, even while permitting one's hair, uh, perming one's hair is subject to a fine, as hair should be straight. Even relatively benign acts such as jaywalking are forbidden to encourage the image that China is indeed a modern nation that uses roads. Nanjing nicknamed one of our birthplaces of the revolution. Due to the fighting during the League Wars, this serves as a new example of the new modern and moral China. Prostitutes and beggars have been driven off the streets and drug addicts sent to rehabilitation. New buildings. Erected on the sites of ruined and dilapidated houses, streets are widened, and a number of new parks and schools have been opened to entertain and educate the people. Playing in the paternalistic direction, we see a total revolution of culture. Absolutely. We are revolutionaries, my friends. Ooh. Before we do that, can we, can we win here? Maybe. They've got a lot of guys on those guys. Now, it helps that we do have... We don't have air superiority, but we do have uh, reconnaissance on the guys, too. But now we're losing. Interesting to note.
Nope, oh, can win there. That sucks. That just means we need more air superiority, don't we? Oh, we got rid of all of our generals, didn't we? Oof. That's alright. Uh, we can always get more. Oh, supplies are really bad up here, huh? Well, you kind of figured as much. No commander. That's pretty normal. Uh, these, these are kind of tank guys, huh? Then uh, Biao. Is that all we have? Uh, there you go. You're not politically connected, which is why I hired this guy instead. Good, good. Mm, that's fine. That's fine. Transmitter's finally gone. Young the chemical plant would be nice. Eventually. Pretty good. Ponakaha. The Iran is nice and thick. Wow. And there goes Bhutan. Goodbye, Bhutan. Uh, come on. We'll get there eventually. Get enough political power. Fate of Bhutan. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We just gotta get rid of this unequal treaties. This crap is god awful for us. Oh. Keep building up all this stuff. Uh, military wise, we have a good amount of stuff, but it's just. Hmm. I'm not here to sell, so much support Russia. Let's support our own goals and aims. Who's down here? Sri Lanka's independent? That's a mistake. <sighs> Russia's a giant state. We can take Russia out, but I want them to win against these guys. If the Russians win here, we can maybe win up here, but we still have to focus on the Japanese eventually, too. There we go. Military uh, cynicalism. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, we can't do this? What the heck? We can't replace it. Why don't we get rid of this? Oh, we gotta go to... This. Oh, gotta go to Shanghai. Okay, interesting. Political advisor. Crime fighter. Weekly stability goes up. Um, hmm. Economy laws, construction speed, ooh, CRS. Well, that would make sense to choose someone like this. We have no one for the Navy, that sucks. Armor, it's not bad. You know what, we got space and time. I like this a lot, but RCA. Mm, economy law, construction, you know, we could use that guy first. And instead, Fate of Bhutan. We're going to come down here. Uh, which one did I read before? Well, this is not bad still. In order to improve communication, supply, and overall travel distance between Langzhou and Gansu and the furthest frontier of Xinjiang, the National Government Ministry of Railways has officially approved a new construction project to construct the Langzhou or Xinjiang Railway linking Gansu to the Hexi Corridor and all the way to Dihua, a project that plans to run over 904 kilometers. I'm going to read this one too. Anhui Industrial Plan. Uh, create green gold mine. We could use a rubber. Chongqing Ching weapons plant. Natural reserves. Oh, we could use aluminum. Begin bauxite extraction in Guizhou. Guizhou is home to some of China's largest bauxite deposits, and the National Government hopes to modernize the South and match the standards of bauxite mining in North China. Led by Resource Committee, this, this project plans to oversee and administer mining sites to the local governments and assemblies to partake in extraction of the bauxite. Encourage mining of Yao Gangxiang sites. The earliest tungsten deposits in Hunan was the Zhichong tungsten deposit found in Taoyuan County in 1901. Since then, the nationalist government plans to further develop Hunan's industry by continuing to mine the Yao Gangjiang mining area. Doing so will not only improve Hunan's infrastructure, but also provide plenty of employment and opportunities for the predominantly agrarian populace. That'd be great. Still building up our navy, building up more resources here. Okay, so if that's the case, the next one we have to do... Oh, there's Petrograd. Uh, demand the return of the concessions. We have to do this one next. How we lamented the humiliation at selling out our fellow Chinese to the imperialists. We do not forget our Shanghai brothers and sisters, who have for years led the spirit of revolution against the reactionary powers. We, however, lead a new China, a China that can finally stand up to the humiliating system that is the legation mandate. Will liberate a countrymen, whether by force or by peace. Happy 1944, we need better planes. Internal factions of the CRS. Because you guys are doing what? Can we justify Nepal? Ooh, this would put in confrontation with these guys. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, despite their hatred for the government bureaucracy and factionalism, 
Uh, the Chandra of Ava society is made up of three major rings, each ring progressively smaller than the last, uh, representing different levels of power with a political hierarchy. The inner circle is a uh, Ling Shi, consisting of 528 members, uh, uh, and is considered to be the new central executive committee of the Kuomintang. The inner circle does not even identify itself as a CRS, but rather, the CRS is a public front for the operations of the society. Their discussions and methods are almost entirely private and secretive, um, although they are led by the executive secretary, He Zhang Han. To supervise the decision making of policies and operations, the inner circles is assisted by a secretariat, Deng Wenyi, and by four separate functional departments, namely the General Affairs, Li Bu Tong, Propaganda, Zheng Yi, Zi, Organization, Zheng Jimin, and Special Services, Dai Chung Feng. The second ring of the uh, concentric circles is He uh, Zhang Han's Revolutionary Army Comrades Araka Association. Yeah. Based around the graduates of Wampoa Military Academy. Whether sometimes mistaken as the actual CRS, Araka is still in charge of planning new cells and is in charge of infiltrating the civilian populace, bureaucracy, and military to raise membership for the CRS. The final third ring is also large in the face of the political aspects of the CRS. Acting as the organization's massive base, the Fu Jingxi, or the China Revival Society, lowest level of the organization, but also the most organized into four departments. However, they have no outright leadership of their own, with, with all matters being handled by the Raka. Organized in a similar committee system with the Kuomintang, debate was admittedly at lower levels, but decisions were made at the top. Furthermore, the CRS even has a supervisory system and a control commission to check and control the Feng Xingqi, while also keeping watch over individual members' thoughts, behavior, and actions, to ensure that they are lord of the national revolution. This control group numbers over 1,000, with the top a supervisory committee with an ex executive secretary at its head, with the control group further splitting into branches and sub-branches levels to maintain control over the overall strength and unity of the party. The generalissimo turns to Ling Shi for guidance. Peep, the will of the people must guide the national revolution. Absolutely. Uh, what do we got here? You keep replacing new generals all the time. Don't know who's here and who's not. There, go to Hong Kong. That's not bad. Oh, they're there too. That's not good. We want some new army generals. Uh, Cheng Wei Kuo, huh? I wouldn't mind some armor, but we're gonna leave them there for now. Go, commanders. I love your helmet. That is an awesome helmet. And infantry leader to boot, too. I like it. Come here, Wang. Um, heart attack, breakthrough. It's not bad. I like the breakthrough. We have no more command power either, so that sucks. Um, yeah. These guys are doing alright. So, we'll do military cynicalism. What do we got here? Improved prisoner holes? Those are nice. Goodbye. Steel is a problem. Ugh, these stupid treaties. Ugh, it's god awful. We'll liberate Taiwan eventually, too. I read this one last time, too. We've read a lot of these. Ooh. Concept of productivity. Students in society are not prepared to assume productive and useful roles in the nation. Instead, they become lazy and just decadent, unproductive members of society. Under a system of productivity, students shall be devoted to training in some form of manual labor in factories, farms, and businesses. In this way, to stand for physical labor will be an overcome, and all will be a useful and productive member, working towards the success of the nation. Absolutely. How's Korea doing? Ah, oh, buddies, how you doing? Three principles? Good. Very good. Sign of Korean friendship? Oh, you betcha. People's army? Oh, yeah. Socialist education, that's right. They might be radical socialists, which is not good, but, you know, whatever. We're still, we're still allies. Mining operations in the five provinces? While well, long exploited by the corrupt warlords and landlords, they degraded the land and resources of the rich and plentiful five provinces of eastern China. The party's leadership will rectify this and seek to modernize the region extensively. The Resource Committee aims to take advantage of local coal and tungsten resources in the former League of Eight Provinces in order to industrialize the Chinese nation. Why not? We need that. Oh, how many planes do we have? None. There you go. Five. There you go. There you go. Then military cynicalism. That's nice. And um, now we have to do this one. So, Fate of Bhutan. Oh, I forgot about this one. After a successful campaign in the Himalayas, we now have to task uh, to establish new local administrative authority in order to restore peace. However, there are several options for a choice. Pop it. Oh, my finger slipped. Oh, but what's a Bhutan? Military cynicalism. Party popular disability modifier. Holy crap. Maximum command power. Increase multiplier. Hey, got more cores. From the Shangqing Tiao Guo are now cores. They weren't earlier, huh? Look at this. Plus 98%. Now we actually get a political power day. Radical, man. Absolutely radical. This campaign's lasting a long time. Which is fine with me. I'm actually really enjoying this. Ooh. The reaction in capitalist nation that is the German Empire have sought nothing but to more to explore the Chinese people and nation. 
It was, after all, the height of the northern expedition in that the German thrust behind a rear led to a collapse of our nation's salvation. As long as uh, the imperial regime exists in Asia, the Asian people cannot be free. It's our duty to save them. Well, in the meantime, let's extol the cult of uh, Ling Yu. Why not? To obtain the complete social, political, and national revolution, there must be a leader who possesses saintly qualities. A pure and exalted person, a man with a thorough understanding of the military and the government. The establishment of a central idol is a first step towards res resurrecting China, and of unifying the KMT. It must not disguise that we demand China's Mussolini, demand China's Sevenkov. It's not bad. We're also going to need a lot of uh, this here, too. Nice. Alright, so the fate of Bhutan. Oh, hello, we just did this one. Hello? So they just penalized us twice. Thank you. Um, let's see. Central authority in China has long been eroded as decades of foreign imperialism, political instability, and domestic unrest in light of imperial weakness spawned a new class of regional militaries in the ailing days of the old Qing Empire. The Xenar Revolution brought further turmoil to the nation as the revolutionary generals seized control of numerous provinces set about building a complex networks of military officers, allied businessmen, landed gentry, sympathetic intelligentsia, and government officials. Nevertheless, a common uh, national identity remains, and various movements across the land have made their bid to unite the nation and rebuild China in their image. Taking advantage of their own patronage networks, foreign support, and growing armies, they clash for influence in the cities and countryside still. In the twisting and turtling realities of a warlord China, open warfare is not, only, is not the only thing this conflict develops. Tales of shifting alliances and sordid betrayal unfold all, all, all the while foreign invasion looms. 1944. We're really behind on tanks, but we're not really focused on tanks, are we? Reliability. No. Nice. Consolidate the frontiers. As a pro priority to establish the fact that the frontier regions of Tibet, Mongolia, and Xinjiang are inherently part of the great Chinese nation. Too long have our fellow Chinese Minzu lay oppressed by the imperialists, yet longing for guidance through the national revolution. As the late Dr. Sun taught us, when we unite and guide them, our country and civilization will be great once more. Yeah. Let's go to the northern frontier. Ooh. Kiva, Turkestan, all those places are dead. The headmaster's legacy. For many people, both, in the party and outside of it. General Chiang Kai-shek was a well-meaning failure at best and a reactionary Bonapartist at worst. His legacy centered by the failure of the northern expedition and the rise of his leftist political rivals. After his assassination in 1927, few had much good to say about the former headmaster of Wampola in public of anything. This all changed with the rise of China's revival society. It was rehabilitated their former leader's teacher's uh, reputation as a disgrace, elevating him to new heights in the revolutionary pantheon almost overnight. State media, which had previously made recitant acknowledgments of Chiang's role as most, have changed their tune. Chiang has been cast as a heroic figure and dashing commander who joined a, trained a generation of revolutionaries before being betrayed by a conniving Wang Jingwei and murdered by wicked reactionaries. Chiang has become a symbol for the military and the model soldier and comrade. As personal foibles have receded into the knowledge of history, were replaced by a nigh mythical stature. All this, of course, serves not only as a personal but also a practical one. For many of the young cadets turned national leaders who never knew Sun Sam personally, Chiang Kai-shek serves as a bridge between the eternal premier's legacy and their own, consolidating their claim to legitimacy, but there's little doubt that there's a genuine element of loyalty involved as well, given the old Wampoa headmaster's fondness for students, one that has since been returned. Chiang's legacy has become a fixture in Hu Zongnan's own cult of personality as the regime builds new heroes and legends. A valiant hero, wise mentor, and example for all future officers. General Lissimo, Hu Zongnan, truly carries his revolutionary torch. Legation cities, carved out of China's coast by ravenous foreign powers, is an institution that highlighted the unequal treatment of our proud nations by various imperialists. Having finally brought the, uh, unity to the interior and ended the instability plaguing it, legations no longer serve their purpose in the role. We shall move to end this cha sad chapter in Chinese history. What well, we could do that and increase relations maybe with them? Let's do that. Nelson Trussler Johnson, you're not going to survive. An end to the century of humiliation. Oh, defying your expectations, Legation Cities already agreed to hand the Legation Cities over to us without a fight. This appears to have caught the foreigners in Sh Shanghai, Tijuan, and other cities by surprise, and the move is already being taken as a betrayal. Although plans are being drawn up for a triumphant march down the Bund, and raising the Chinese flag over the Shanghai for the first time in a century, events will likely unfold far less cleanly. The cities, existing volunteer defense groups, will soon find themselves being bolstered by those hoping to defend their homes, even as leg Legationary troops prepare to withdraw. Um, chaos is already being, beginning to fill the streets of Shanghai as foreigners pile on the ships, take up rifles, or barricade their homes. The following weeks and months will be messy, but such is oppressive imperialism. At last, it's over. Fantastic. Request to the turn of the Portuguese concessions and Siamese concessions. 
The concessions were initially small pieces of land leased out to foreign powers in a weakness, which only expanded in scope as colonial powers sought to bring a lower people. Having finally united the nation, we can finally bring to bear the united might of China and formally challenge the imperialists who are desperately cling out of their unjust possessions. They didn't really like us, but let's improve relations first. Unequal trees. Ah, oh, thank God. Uh, that's better. This is definitely better overall. We need some serious rubber, though. Okay, so we're building a lot. Oh, my God. Build, build, build the crap out of everything you have. Um, build tons of civvies. 300 factories, not bad. Really, really nice. Oh, is this? Create a new economic policy zone in Shanghai. Both Chen Gongbo and Song Ziwen, the two giants of national reconstruction, share the belief that China's coastal industrial economy constitute the foundations of a new republic. As such, specially designated zones and coastal cities will help generate national capital under the watchful eyes of the state. Yes. Sounds good to me. Liberation of Asia, consolidate the frontiers. That's nice. Oh, we can still do this one now. The Red Generalissimo. You lose 90% stability due to how much stability, uh, popularity of the totalism we have. But we'll probably do this one instead. National regeneration. Secure the Northern Frontier. Uh, Beyond the Mac Mahan Line. Liberate Taiwan. Got tons of liberation we could do. Um, industrialization of agriculture. I think I heard this one before, so we can do this one again. Please go right ahead. Not even one a day now. God dang it. Improving relations with Portugal, that's why. And then expand the military pension system. Of all the social classes that make up Chinese society in the day and age, none contribute more so than the goal of China's national revolution than that of the military. It's a military that keeps the flame of the revolution alive. It's a military in which China shall derive her strength. As such, it's imperative that we ensure that our veterans and soldiers receive adequate compensation for the sacrifices to the nation. It's good. We're going to do some more of this immediately. You know what? We're okay with that. Let's go and do that, because we need planes. We're going to need a lot of planes. Tons and tons and tons and tons of planes for all of our soldiers. Because you're going to need this down here, because we're going to go to war them no matter what anyway in the end. Do that too. Build, 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 build. Uh, Spirit of Wild pull up military leader costs. So we should get the military leaders now, and then we can do that. Oh, we need, uh, how much more? 60. Good God. Nice. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. That's a little different. Good to know. I love caffeine. I do not have a problem, I swear. Well, I shouldn't swear, but I don't have a problem. Nice. We shall liberate Taiwan. Our country faces no greater tragedy than selling out our fellow Chinese to the Japanese imperialists and when we surrender the island of Taiwan. Now that China is strong once more, it's our national duty as the Chinese people to unite with our Taiwanese countrymen. Our Taiwanese brothers and sisters yearn for liberation. It will free them from their chance uniting our country once more. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we have more military factories. Look at that. Um, I wouldn't mind some anti-air. An anti-tank would be pretty nice, too. We need quite a bit of that. We need quite a bit of this, too. Making our subs, too, which is actually very good as well. Um, planes are decent. Yeah, well, I'll do that off-screen probably, if I remember. I'm probably not going to remember until the beginning of the next episode. Defense? No. Oh, look at that. You all do that. Uh, you can split off. You can go and do that too if you need to. And cut corners. God dang it. Our place in the world, which we read last time. Long High Railway. Yeah, I read that one too. Um, let me see. Is there anything else we need to do up here? Well, Portugal. Portugal. Macau. Guys. Really. Request a turn of the Siamese concessions. Well, let's do two of these down here. The Yuhan Railway. Construction of the Guangdong Hankou Railway began in 1896 during the Qing Dynasty, however, completion of the railways remained an elusive task. A great deal of disruption was caused by the resulting civil wars across China and the mismanagement of the warlords, which have greatly hindered progress. Under the Ministry of Railways, the Nationalist government has hired Ling Hojun to finish the Zhuxiao section of the railway, which we could do, or could we could grab someone else here? Because at this point, it doesn't matter. But it makes more sense to do Zhao Zheng Yu, um, or strengthen this guy. Strengthen the reinforce the Tiwu, which we're not doing. So... I guess we'll get this guy next. Because it just makes sense. Uh, focus on that. They, returned, they refuse to return the concessions. 
As expected as such unrepentant imperialists, the Portuguese foreigners have refused to turn their concessions. Now I will shield them the might of the United China. We will in time. Thank God we got Hong Kong. Extraction. Yes, please. The future of land reform. Well, the blue shirts of the China Revival Society are nominally unified in their desire for national economic reforms under the direction of national socialism. Interestingly enough, the CRS finds itself rather divided on the issue of land reform. Land reform moderates, which include the most of the Xing, uh, Li Jingxi Central Executive Committee, who are not involved with the National Revolutionary, uh, Revolutionary Army Commerce Association, advocate mass industrialization as a means of modernizing agriculture. They're inspired by the machine tractor system and proposed by Slavic colonists in the Russian state, and seek to create a similar manner in China. However, they oppose total land nationalization as they believe that the system of private, uh, private land holding has resulted from an evolution of history, and to overthrow such a system would exacerbate rural disorder. Instead, they advocate for a reduction of taxes and rents, the total elimination of corruption of bureaucrats, and the improvements of transportation and agricultural facilities and techniques for the peasants. It is therefore a seeks to follow Dr. Sir Sun's principle of land to the tiller, requiring that farm owners should sell only land in excess of nine acres in exchange would receive government bonds. He is Zong Han, and his Revolutionary Army Comrades Association, however, advocate for much more radical land reform. They demand the total nationalization of land and the reorganization of production by state-managed agricultural collectives for them. Simply redistributing land to the farmers would perpetuate the cultural stain of economic individualism. By creating a system of large-scale rationalized production on state-owned agricultural collectives, the introduction of improved land farm technology would be facilitated as with the accumulation and reinvestment of farm surplus. The creation of these uh, farm plots with the help of machine tractor stations and other means of machinery would create the industrialization of agriculture. By advocating the method of nationalization and collectivization, the Araka knowingly commits ideological heresy by challenging the teachings of the late leader, Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Uh, by advocating, yeah, oh, the Araka's answer that Sun never stated whether the ultimate land system would be based upon private or national ownership, just as a means of attaining equal rights, which would naturally happen due to Araka's total nationalization of land. We should pursue the moderate direction. The will of the people demand total nationalization. That just makes too much sense, you know. And, and eliminate unnecessary bureaucracy, we will eventually imperialism crush forevermore. Oh my god. Two suns in the sky. Uh, liberate Southeast Asia. Well, we can't do that yet. Um, we got a lot of stuff done. The concept of productivity? Yeah, I read that one earlier. Harmonious economy. The concept of national socialism does not attack the system of private enterprise, rather it seeks to place critical areas of the economy, such as heavy industry, mining, large-scale transport, and foreign trade to be managed by the state. There should be no proscription on private profit, but rather private property must be used for the benefit of society. By this method, we'll seek to create a truly harmonious uh, economy. It's fantastic. Um, what else we got here? Uh, armor? I mean, that would be bad, but we'd have no use for you immediately. So, at this point, what do we got? So, the Japanese, they have a pretty big empire. They're trying to beat up America. The Russians are losing to the Reich's Pact, so we might actually want to take those guys out first. If anything, they might be the ones we really want to go to war with next. Uh, Russia's combined proximity and reaction regimes have always reminded us that the threat of imperialism does not just come from the West, but also from the North. Russia's greediness also eyes claims of Mongolia, but let's not forget that Ottoman Syria was once part of the greater Chinese state. If we're to safeguard our borders, it's imperative that we strike with the element of surprise and great force against the Russian bear. Of course, I do want to go reward these guys, but we can wait. If, if Russia's going to be defeated, I definitely do not want to fight um, the Germans in Asia. If anything, we can get up to the Urals, maybe. I don't know if that would actually work or not. But we can just give a lot of us off back, maybe. Uh, you know what? We're going to do something radical here. I want a motorized divisions. I want a lot of motorized divisions. We're going to get support anti-air. You're going to get some motorized recon. And support anti-tank. That's going to be bad, but we're going to wait. Hello? Motor Division, yes. There you go. Because now you guys are all going to convert. And horses are not bad. I want you guys to convert to this too. Where do you have that? No. Um, you can convert to that from now. I want to see if we can just use this mobile motorized army. Somewhat motorized army up here, maybe? I don't know. Uh, oh, who's this? Colonial Officer. Cavalry Attack and Defense. Oh, that's, that's different. Train to lead colonial, colonial units in combat. Oh, that's actually really cool. You don't guard, though. I don't like that. How many trucks are we out? Are we out of trucks? If not... Oh, that's fine. You know what? Convert them all. Screw it. Nuclear reactor's nice. Because uh, we'll have to see where we need to build up... Uh... Oh, God. There we go. 
because um, this is going to be really sucky. Are we missing anything else? Tons of trucks. Lots of trucks. We can buy trucks. That's not a problem. From America? It's okay. We'll do that. Are we going to have enough fuel for the trucks? Probably not. That's alright. I wonder if this will be enough to take out the Russians. And move fast enough? Nationalized Manchuria's oil, iron industry. The Anshan Iron Mines and Beng Shi like Coal and Iron Company was once jointly owned by the Feng Chong clique and the Japanese, a terrible reminder of Japan's pervasive influence via the Matsetsu in our lands. Due to the prevalence of coal in the region, the company supplied Japan with cheap steel at the expense of exploiting Chinese labor. Throughout their occupation, the Chinese miners of the company were treated brutally, and now we have the opportunity to free them. With their hold on the Northeast firm is secure, we now have the opportunity to fully nationalize and own the mines in the Beng Shi like coal and iron and company so that the resources will be benefit the Chinese people uh, today. Nice. Uh, how many more days we got? I want to get that political power first. And we're just going to slap this guy on. Ah, eh, we'll wait. We're just going to do this after one. Be on the back line. Hmm. Yeah, we could do this one too. Or we could do the youth of a new revolutionary, new revolutionary era as well. Well, the youth of this country will be born in a new revolutionary China, and it's our duty to ensure that the revolution continues with them. We'll create youth organizations and scouting groups to encourage the youth to work together in groups and to encourage physical education in all schools. For the youth of China will be the future men and women of the National Revolutionary Army, uh, and it's important that we cultivate them in the next vanguard. Eliminate unnecessary bureaucracy. The greatest defeat of the party's bureaucracy is that everyone makes excuses and blames everyone else, thereby dis dissipating the party's internal strength. No one acts in as soon as a meeting called, there are disagreements. In recent months, we have seen what factualism has done, as their duty to ensure that the party never falls again to such weakness. Taking inspiration from our Cerulean peers, our patronage positions will be gutted and the disloyal purged. But we'll end it there, because next episode will hopefully be a war with uh, with uh, good old uh, Russia. Because we've got big old for this. So, If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll try to smash the Russian bear. Hopefully. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.